<laughs> Hi everyone, Anthony Kardashian here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of a hip-hop record, a collaborative hip-hop record, Bad Bad Not Good and Ghostface Killa, Sour Soul. This may be hip-hop, but is it real hip-hop? Why are you not in the closet? R r real! Is it real? Yes, it, it is a real hip hop album. It is a, it is a really a hip hop album. Cause I only I only listen to that real hip hop. I don't even understand what you're saying. Yes, it's it's a real hip hop album. Is it real though? It's real. Okay. You don't gotta yell. Yes, this is a collaborative album between a young. Ontario jazz trio whose music I have reviewed numerous times in the past and infamous Staten Island rapper and Wu-Tang member Ghostface Killa. Has gotten a second win lately and has been embarking on some pretty interesting projects like 12 Reasons to Die, a revenge-fueled story album with loads of vintage soul, funk, and rock-flavored instrumentals from band leader Adrian Young, and Ghostface Killa tried to recreate much of that very same magic Magic on his next full-length LP, 36 Seasons. A revenge-fueled story album as well, but with less captivating verses and characters and instrumentals. But really for me, this record was kind of just a, a lukewarm appetizer because as I was listening to this album, my head was already in the future in February 2015. Because at the time of the release of this record, this new collaborative album over here had already been announced. And given that I am a big Bad Bad Not Good fan, I, I was really more anticipating this. If you're not familiar with Bad Bad Not Good, they've only been around a few years thus far, but in that short time span, they have recorded some very impressive, energetic, and explosive fusions of jazz music, hip hop, and rock. And given they've had previous experience working with hip hop artists on records or performing, Odd Future, Pharaoh Manch, I figured this new record here, just, it's a layup. It's in the bag. It's it, it just can't be anything else but but awesome. However, uh, after listening to this record, uh, I I guess it didn't really reach my expectations. Instrumentally, this record really seems to be in a similar vein to Ghostface Killa's previous two. Once again, the music backing Ghost's verses pulls from 60s and 70s soul, funk, and rock music, maybe a little bit of a exploitation film soundtrack work. There are also some pretty lush horn and string arrangements on this LP, and the bass, the keys, the drums are all really tight. So while, yeah, instrumentally, this record does reach kind of a, a standard of, of technical and performance quality, it feels like Bad Bad Not Good is really playing it straight on this album. However, maybe this change of pace isn't totally unexpected given that the last Bad Bad Not Good album relied so heavily on dense, layered compositions than it did freewheeling, fiery improvisations. But together, the band and producer Frank Dukes actually do recreate this style of music with an extreme and impressive attention to detail. Like with the interlude instrumental tracks, which there are a few of on this record, like Stark's Reality and the closing song Experience. However, my first kind of gripe with this LP is that it's it's a little brief. You know, it's it's just over 30 minutes in length, and for a record this brief, there really aren't enough songs where Ghost is rapping, at least at length, for me. Because there are some songs here where he'll drop one verse, maybe it's kind of short, but one verse all the same, and then he'll kind of duck out. And maybe the song will end at that point, or maybe there will be a little bit of instrumental padding. The feature list on this LP is actually pretty impressive, though. We have Detroit MC Danny Brown, whose high-pitched inflection and insane delivery is always a highlight, no matter where he turns up. Of course, we have Doom, aka MF Doom, whose verse is pretty kooky on this record. As usual, up-and-coming MC Tree from Chicago, whose delivery is kind of subdued on his appearance here, maybe a little too subdued. Dude. And then my favorite appearance on this record has to be the Elzai verse. There's one line here where he says, hit the bottom of the asphalt, it's probably your asphalt. But as far as Ghostface goes on this record, the core figure of this album, I think a lot of his verses on this LP are 
I don't know, just kind of average by, by his standards. Nothing terrible, nothing offensive. I don't get that same lack of excitement or drive that I got on 36 Seasons. His expressive flow is there, his charisma is there, the usual lyrics and, and themes about being a seedy and violent criminal are there as well. But I can't help but listen to this album and feel like his ambitions didn't really push past the idea of let's just make some tracks together. The title track on here, Ghostface, sort of seems to be portraying himself as a, a twisted and very paranoid individual who is worried about being spied on and microchipped. The instrumental's very laid back with guitars and bass and drums, but it feels like, you know, more of a tone set or more of an introduction than the actual very short intro instrumental track. I love the very dramatic track, Gun Showers, again, with Elzai. Then there's the song Tones Rap which I wish was longer, but for the minute that it's on, Ghostface kind of seems to deliver a, a, a pimp's lament, which, if you just take it as straight fiction, is pretty funny. Ghostface Killer's flow goes kind of speedy on the song Street Knowledge, which is cool, even though the uh, refrain here is very busy and kind of jumbled. There's another track on here I feel the same way about Mind Playing Tricks on Me, where the refrain, the hook, is again just really jumbled and, and not much translates in terms of it being memorable. But but to go back to this track, Street Knowledge, uh, again, Tree's contribution here is just a little too sleepy, just really uneventful. And I guess the other feature that kind of underwhelmed me was actually Dooms on the song Ray Gun, which isn't a terrible song. It's definitely one of the more upbeat tracks in the track listing here, but it's not one of the hotter songs I've heard Ghost and Doom do together, definitely surpassed by The Mask on Danger Doom or the song Chinatown Wars. One of my favorite tracks on this record is actually toward the end, Food or Food for Thought. It's low key, it's emotional, it's inspirational, even though Ghostface sentiments and the messages he's communicating might be a little basic. There's a gorgeous theme melody on this track, and Ghost actually sticks around for two full verses instead of just one, and, and again, that, that's kind of another one of my issues with this LP. Even some of the tracks that I like, such as Nuggets of Wisdom, for example, they just come off so brief. While there wasn't anything outright awful on this album, much of it doesn't show any initiative. I think at the end of the day, this collaboration was more exciting in its billing than it was in its execution. I thought this record was decent, it had its moments, it had its great melodies, it had its great instrumentals, it had its great verses, just don't expect too many of those and don't expect the good ones, the best ones, to last very long. I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this thing, transition. If you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Ghostface Killer, Bad Bad Not Good, Sour Soul, Forever.